Jen from Fabulous Paper Emporium. I've got two different styles of curtain fold today. So we've got one style, which is basically like a half curtain. So this is, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So this is the curtain fold part. So obviously it's intended to look like ripples in a curtain. So that's where the name came from. That's the only, only thing that I can, you know, assume. Um, and this one, we have a, again, a lovely curtain fold, but on this side, we've got both sides. So we are going to go through all the steps and they're super simple. They look really elegant. I mean, I think, I think so anyways. <clears throat> you do need to have, the only thing you do need to have is it looks better if you have double-sided paper for the fold. So I, again, have, I'm using, still using that same paper pack. This was the last sheet that I had that was full 12 by 12. And after making what will be a total of four cards using the paper, this is all I'm going to have left. So I have a strip here and I think it's two, yeah, two by 12. And then I have another little bit here. And then we have some little bits from what we had to trim off for this card. And I haven't obviously thrown them out because I still feel like I could possibly use them somewhere. So I am using every single stitch of this fabric or every single fiber of this, of this fabric fiber of this paper, um, making it go as far and as long as I could possibly, as possibly do it. So <clears throat> we are going to start off by going through this one, curtain fold. I call this curtain fold number two, but it was the first one that I actually tried. So we're going to do that one first. And the finished um, measurements of this one, four and a quarter by five and a half. So again, um, a really nice card that will fit into your standard envelope. The only thing different that I would do, and I should have thought of this ahead of time, but I didn't, is um, this is some leftover black and white, obviously black with white polka dot paper, which is the reverse side of the paper that I used below. I probably wouldn't use paper again because you can see kind of the, the fold at the top. On the second card, I learned from my mistake, I used some ribbon. So I would probably recommend using ribbon for that part. And um, this way you kind of cover that, that top seam, <laughs> uh, for a lack of a better word. So... <clears throat> Anyway, so we're going to get to this one. I'm going to go through the cardstock paper that we are using today, all the measurements. Really, like I, again, super simple. And I just realized that I did not cut an inside piece for myself, which is okay because I will cut that right now. Uh, apologize. So I will cut that and I will be right back. Okay, perfect. Um, <laughs> I will also apologize for the state of my right hand because it is a mess and I apologize for that. I didn't think it was going to be quite so noticeable and I don't know why I thought it wasn't going to be noticeable because all you see are my hands basically when I'm doing this. But uh, I, w <laughs> it happened, I was doing, I was getting something from inside my laundry basket and it was way down. So when I went to yank it out, it, I, my thing, my hand got caught on some of the, um, weirdly sharp edges <laughs> of the holes that are cut out in the laundry basket. Anyways, I digress. I got attacked by the laundry basket. I don't want to do laundry anymore. So maybe that should be, um, hubby's chore from now on. So thumbs up for that. If, if nothing else, if you give me a big old thumbs up for that reason, by all means, <laughs> I'll, I'll take that as a win. So getting back to the task at hand. So our card base is black for this one. 
and this will measure four and a quarter by 11, which is great because you can get two cards out of this, uh, out of one eight and a half by 11, which is always a bonus. And because these are cut um, at three by 11 and a half, you could also get four, uh, well, actually more. You could get eight, because we're cutting them on the diagonal. You can get eight of of these from like one piece of a, a 12 by 12. So again, I'm getting ahead of myself. I apologize. I'm super excited about this. <laughs> so four and a quarter by 11. And we're going to be scoring that really simply, just score that at five and a half. Then we have the inside piece, and this is cut at four by five and a quarter. We're going to be using pink for the bottom, and I'm using a scrap. So this is a good card if you do have some scraps laying around, because if you'll if you'll notice, originally I cut the 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 pink piece. Um, I cut this one three and a half. Uh, sorry, four by three and a half. But this piece wasn't quite as as tall. So it is, I think, maybe three or maybe two and a bit. Two and three quarters. So this is two and three quarters. But if you'll notice, once we do the folding, this is just gonna tuck underneath there. So it doesn't have to be three and a half. So again, really kind of a smart way to use some of your paper scraps. So the pink piece, if you want to, it. I originally cut it, like I said, four by three and a half. This one is four by two and three quarters and you'll be able to get away with it, no problem. The top piece, the turquoise piece, is cut at four by two and I've left just a little bit of, you know, there's a little bit of overlap there. But again, that's gonna be hidden, I feel like, from uh, the ribbon. And I apologize if you hear panting, it's my dog. He's decided to come in and visit into my craft room. So that's great. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So those are those pieces. And the last piece I have, this again was the, the second half to my original card. I was actually looking for it. Uh, it's a second half to this. And I will show you um, on my cutting board. Obviously, I don't have a piece that is quite, uh, it's not the same. So um, showing you how to cut it, I, uh, I'll go through the motions. So I'm going to do that right now because I think that probably is the best place to do it since I really don't have to show you. So this originally was cut at uh, 11 and a half by 3. And what we need to do is, obviously this doesn't come to a point here. So what I did was I moved and I put the, um, the upper left-hand corner, I aligned that with the one inch on my trimmer at the top. And then the bottom right hand, I put that at one inch. So it ended up cutting something like this. So you can do it really simply with your trimmer, but if you would prefer, I feel like I should actually show this to you. So here, I'm going to show you with this black cardstock. So basically what I did, top left hand at the one inch on the left hand side, and then on the bottom right hand side, on my trimmer, I've got a couple of measurements to the right, to the to the right of the blade. So this is how I lined it up and then cut. So you end up with two pieces that are not quite triangles. And that's how you come up with your, that's how you start, obviously, we're gonna be scoring and, and doing some folding and things. The other way to do it, if you're, if you don't have a scoreboard, a scoreboard, if you don't have a paper trimmer or if your paper trimmer maybe doesn't go to one inch on the right hand side, then you could always just simply, when it's like this, you're going to measure one inch down and then one inch up. And that way you'll just cut from, 
from uh, pencil mark to pencil mark and you'll end up with the same the same pieces so there's that so I'm gonna put that away and I'm gonna grab my scoreboard it if you have a scoreboard it does come in super handy because we are doing a lot of measurements um, because it is a pretty fancy fold but nothing that we cannot handle so with the three inch now again it depends on how you like to have your fold going and it also depends on which side you want to have come up but I want to have I'm going to duplicate this curtain fold down here so I want my wide end at the on the left hand side if not I could always flip it over and kind of do it this way but I want to do it this way and have it the exact same way so we're going to start our scoring at the one inch mark get this so we're going to do one and then we're going to do two and a half and then we're going to do three and a quarter four and three quarters five and three quarters, seven and a quarter, eight, nine and a half, and ten and a quarter. Okay, so <clears throat> now with this, we are going to start our folding. This is really as complex as it gets, really. So I want to have my hearts on the outside. So I'm having it face up. And then I'm going to start by folding the first score line is going to go down. So the what I, I am going to also keep, be mindful of is I want to keep the top part aligned so that you have a nice edge at the top and you really want to burnish these, these folds as we go. So that was my first fold. Then I go to my second score line and I'm going to fold back onto itself. And again, keeping the top part in line okay and then we're going to fold back on the next fold or the next score line <clears throat> okay get that burnished and we're going to come back and this is what we're doing. Like, obviously you can already see how this comes, how this uh, comes to be the curtain fold. So you just keep like score line after score line, you go, you go over it's over and then, you know, back over again. <laughs> that didn't make any sense. I'm sorry. You go one way and then you fold back and then you go one way and you fold back. So that's kind of how this, this comes together. So, okay. Okay. And I think we have one more fold left. Perfect. Okay. So we are just about there so the last thing we need to do is tack it all down so i'm just going to grab my liquid glue you could use um tape double-sided tape if you wish um that will work equally as good and the only the next thing you're going to do is just run a little bit of glue be careful how you're doing this because this top part is a little bit shorter than the bottom. So I'm putting the glue on the bottom part, but I'm being mindful of how this, this top fold is not quite as long. So I don't want to go crazy and go and glue past where, where the top piece is going to fold over. So then you'll have a mess on your hands. I know this. I speak from personal experience. <laughs> warning labels are there because probably somebody has tried to do whatever the warning label is warning against. So heed my warning. <laughs> All right. So that part is done. We're going to flip it over and we're going to do the exact same thing. Only this time we don't really have to worry about 
going kind of all crazy with the glue because the top part that we are gluing down is actually longer. So no worries there. It doesn't require a lot of glue. You don't have to go crazy. You're just tacking it down. Okay, so there we go. Our lovely curtain fold. And now it's just a matter of assembly. So we are going to score or just fold our card base. And I'm having this where the, the, the card just flips up this way in this direction. So um, I'm gonna set this off to the side for a hot second. And then I'm just gonna lay out my, how this is gonna work. So you could, if you were doing the ribbon part, because the back is not all one piece, the ribbon I chose here doesn't actually curl under, but I think I will do that for this part. So when I'm laying down this, um, the curtain fold on, even on this card, I'm going to wrap, kind of adhere the ribbon to this piece and kind of just tuck it under a little bit because you know, that will stop any possible fraying from happening. You won't have to worry about that. So again, because these were two, you know, little leftovers, little scraps that I had from making my other cards, I didn't want to waste them. And this piece will lay on top. So it's going to cover this gap quite nicely because it's going to go from edge to edge Really, unless you take apart the card, you're not gonna notice. So the recipient won't be any the wiser. So I'm gonna first go ahead and lay down the pink on the bottom, and we're just leaving ourselves a nice little border because again, we've cut this a little bit smaller than we cut the base, which is kind of how I like to do my cards. You certainly don't have to do it this way. If you wanted to put this on, put your card front and just create the card front, which I've heard people do. Um, they just create the card fronts. They have that all in the file folder system. And then as they need them, they pull them out and stick them to a card base and away they go. So it's just something new I, I just learned like in the past week. So I am, hmm, obviously this is a, this is a Valentine's Day card. So I think I'm going to grab my Misty and just grab some of the, uh, grab my stamp. So this is a stamp. It's not one that I have in the store, but if you ever wanted it, I could certainly get it. It's from the Say It With Stamps, uh, which is a photo play stamp collection. I have shown you some of the other ones that I do have. I've got a thank you one that also has the dies. I have the little sentiment strips, as well as this piece and joy that I've used on a couple of other card projects. And then I think I have another one that I haven't even broken open yet. Um, it's the Hi, Hello, Hey one. So, oh, I just tore that right off. Gotta love these cellophane bags. Try to use them to keep everything together. But that has just, I think, seen its, seen the, the, the last bit of light of day. <laughs> so, all right. So I'm just going to put this over here. I'm not going to put anything else with it. I think I'm just going to do love for right now. So if you haven't seen the Misty in action, this is a, a fantastic stamping apparatus. Um, it, If you, for whatever reason, um, have stamps that are maybe a little bit challenging to get uh, all solid in one go, then this you'll love. So if you see here, the my line, I, I didn't really try to ink it up a whole, you know, bunch. So the love is not quite as solid as I'd like it. So I can go back in. I'm going to ink that again. And then I'm going to give it another go. 
And because I've got the magnet holding down the paper, the paper's not going anywhere. So it is going to going to um, lay the stamp on the same exact spot each and every time. Okay, so I wanted to do it one more time and now I am so happy. It's a nice solid black um, lettering. I don't have to worry about that. So I'm just gonna set this off to the side. I will clean my stamp later <clears throat> and then we can get going. Okay, and for anybody who's curious, I'm using VersaFine. I love using VersaFine for my black stamping. It's either that or the um, Archival, Ranger Archival, the black one there too. I have it somewhere. And I will be, I'm so excited about this, we'll be bringing in a line of inks as well. So this is the other one. Of course, this is a massive stamp pad, so really not... Uh, great for you know having a stamp on something like that or you bring the ink to the stamp so I don't use it quite as often anymore but it still comes in really handy and I love 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 if you are uh, a fan of using Copic markers or um, art uh, I was gonna say archival if you're using uh, al alcohol <laughs> I promise I have not been drinking any. Um, if you're using alcohol markers, then that is perfect. It takes a little bit to dry because there is, um, it is uh, not, it, there's no water in it. The water, the ones that have, um, that are water soluble are the ones that, that tend to dry a little bit faster, but you need to have the alcohol kind of evaporate is something along the lines of what I've learned and um, it won't run. So if you're a fan of using uh, markers, then that should be good. Even pencil crayons. I don't think you'll have any issues with those types of coloring utensils if that is what you like doing. Okay, so now I've got my top part done, my bottom part done. I'm gonna grab my little, um, curtain fold piece. I'm going to grab some ribbon. I don't need to cut a lot away as I kind of take down everything. <clears throat> and so I'm going to just kind of play around with it a little bit. It doesn't have to go all the way to the top, but something like that, that works for me. So I don't have to worry about that. So all I did with the ribbon is to attach the ribbon, I used double-sided tape. So easy. I don't have to worry about the glue kind of seeping through, which I do on occasion worry about. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra at either end. Okay. And what I'm going to do, why I'm doing that is because I'm going to be tucking the, the ribbon underneath and I want to secure it to the back as well. So I'm going to just fold the excess um, tape to the back and I'm just going to peel it from there and that will give something for the uh, ribbon to grab a hold of. And there we go. So I'm going to lay this down. May get a little bit stuck to my board. I got these new craft mats and I haven't, I was using them downstairs and I haven't even bothered bringing them upstairs, but I really need to because they're amazing. Okay. And it will, it, what I should have done is starting to start is, is started to use those like right from day one. But instead I thought I was going to, I thought I was a clean er crafter, but judging from the mat that I have here, I really, I really, really am not. And then I'm just going to put this right here and I'm going to put that on with some of my liquid glue. Whoa, as we go crazy, no need to go crazy. Do you want it to stick? So, there. okay, perfect. And then I just apply it. 
Put some pressure, make sure you have good contact everywhere. And we are pretty much done. I just gotta put the inside in and then card number one is completed. And if you noticed, I did use a couple of the stickers on the inside and a couple on the outside. Well, just one long one. It was a really cute XOXO little strip that you got. So you can use that for like a nice little border. Um, it's a really cute paper, paper collection. Um, where was that one? Where did I put it? Oh, under my stamps. Duh. <clears throat> so this this little strip is a uh, stickers that came with the um with the collection that I've been using and it's the uh Tula and Norbert's love story is the collection and I'm going to grab that. So I've got a couple of cards here that I'm hoping to get to towards the end of the week. And so this I mean my stickers have been pretty much picked through but if I have them, I'm going to use them. So I think for this one, oh, that might be enough. Because so I know the little XOXO, I won't have enough to do the, the second card that we're going to do tonight. So I'm going to see if I have enough to do just maybe the inside. I used one of the other stickers on the inside. I used the little, the cute Cupid, the Nomi Cupid. So that was my first one. And then on the inside, I think I used, oh yeah, the little envelope with the, sealed with the kiss. And then I'm going to grab the rest of that XOXO. And not enough to go like all the way, but you can center that and put that in. I like it just like that. <clears throat> so that is it for the first card. Beautiful, right? And now we're going to do our second card. So this one, very much this, a very similar way of putting the card together. It's just this folding is a little bit different. And we're going to go through that um, in just a second. I'm going to give you the measurements for, for the pieces. <clears throat> so for the base, this one is obviously wider. And so for the base, we have five and a quarter by 10 and a half. So this is going to make a nice square card that's five and a quarter by five and a quarter. So this piece just needs to be scored at five and a quarter. And then we have our outside. So the bottom piece here is cut at five by three and a quarter. And then the top part is cut at five by two. And I did have some extra and it just happened to be that they're they're going to overlap on this one but again you don't have to because this part will cover quite a bit and i think it's a, an inch and a half at the smallest at the shortest part yeah so this piece right here is an inch and a half there's a little bit underneath that ribbon so so long as your your pink piece and your bottom piece, I mean, it doesn't have to be pink and turquoise, you can do whatever color. Um, <clears throat> so long as that they're close enough within an inch and a half, you're gonna be fine. Okay, so gave you those measurements, right? Uh, five by three and a quarter, five by two, and then this last piece is three by 11. Okay, three by 11. And I'll go through how to score. So we're gonna score it first, then we're gonna cut it. It's a whole lot easier that way. So we're gonna grab our scoreboard because as per the original one, the first one that we did, um, the second one is going to have quite a bit of scoring to be done. So we are gonna score at one and a half, at two, at three, and three and a half, at four and a half, at five, at six, six and a half, seven and a half, eight, nine, and nine and a half. Now, if you find that I'm going too fast when I'm doing that kind of thing, in the description below, I always put all the measurements and what I've used. So 
feel free. I mean, I, I also post them when I have it come up on the on the video as well. But I just wanted to make sure that people knew that the descriptions are have always got the measurements. Anything that I make, the descriptions are always uh, include what I've used as well as the uh, the measurements. So <clears throat> for this one, we do need to break out our ruler. So from the bottom, we've got two score lines and I am barely see them. Okay. So we're going to have, we have two score lines, one at five and one at six inches. So that's these two score lines. I'm going to grab my little pencil so that I can see them a little bit. We're going to be cutting the bottom part off anyway. So it doesn't, this part doesn't really matter. So at the five, and six, I'm going to take my ruler and <laughs> try not to get my head in the camera, in camera view, but I may not be able to. I don't know. We'll see. You're going to measure up an inch and a half. I make a little mark and then I'm going to do the exact same thing for the six inch score mark. And then I'm just going to attach those two, make a line and attach those. Just making sure I feel a sneeze coming on. Oh boy. Excuse me. Okay. So I'm just going to connect those two, two little marks that I made here. Okay. And then what we are going to do is we're going to cut out that little piece. So this is going to make the center, I don't want to use those big ones, the center of our uh, curtain fold. All right, so I'm cutting on the score line. I want the score line to disappear. So I've cut it and it's, I've got this little flap here. And so then I'm just going to come in and cut that piece out. So this is what you end up with, right? Little, almost like a little doorway, if you will. And so we have two options at this point. You can easily take your paper trimmer, line up this corner with this bottom corner, slice it off and then repeat it on this side, or you can use your ruler and pencil and line that up, do a pencil line, and then grab your scissors and cut away this excess. I'm gonna do one way on, I don't think the dog is quite getting into this card making. That's fine. <laughs> being a good papa dog so far okay <clears throat> so that's how you do it with the scissors and you know pencil and stuff <laughs> for your paper trimmer you are going to again you line up the two areas where you want to cut from and to so I'm going to start at the top you can start at the bottom but this is a point and I find that um, it's usually better not to start at a point because you can, you have a, ch uh, a chance of kind of folding and crimping the uh, end by accident. So then you go like that. Okay, it works either way. I didn't quite come to a point there. Give me one second. There. Okay, so. Now that we have our lovely curtain fold base, then we can start, you can start from either end. I like starting from the middle because the middle, I know that the middle panel is going to stay flat. So we're going to start on the left hand side and we're going to go behind and then find the next score line and come forward. And again, as we go through, I'm just watching to keep this all aligned. 
Sometimes the score lines go a little wonky and that's fine. You can always fix that as you go. <clears throat> Grabbing my bone folder because we want to make sure that those are burnished nice and well. Find the other score line, fold that over and back and forth we go. So we're just going to complete, we're going to go ahead and finish this off on either side. Okay, so I've got one side done. The other side is basically a mirror image of what we've just done. So we're going to start off by going behind and then forward. And we're just going to keep doing that until we have our completed curtain fold. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do is, of course, we need to go through with our glue, tack everything down. So I'm going to do that really quickly with my liquid glue. Again, on the top part, um, you're going to want to be careful, especially on this side. For some reason, my glue's not coming out. There we go. Just be careful that you don't get overzealous and decide to go all the way down to the bottom because the top part on this side is, well, on both sides are, um, tops are a little bit shorter. On the back side, not a problem. Okay, so with all the folding and gluing, this is what you end up with. <clears throat> Bringing that one in as well. And we're just gonna finish up by folding our, now you can do it either way. Um, on this card, I decided to have it open like a book. And I'm gonna do the same thing for my second one. Okay. <laughs> so hard seeing black on black. It is uh, really challenging. There we go. I mean, you could use your scoreboard and score it properly, and that's fine. I'm just <laughs> not being lazy. I just don't want it. I don't feel like it. So this part is going to go up here. I can stamp my love on the bottom, and that one has some really cute um sayings that come before and after if you're not familiar with the say it with stamps collection it does the the larger word so the word love in this case <clears throat> is the larger word and then the smaller words um are things like always and forever more than my stamp collection just the way you are always really really so it they're all they're all parts of sentences that can go before and or after so you can put together a full sentence so there's love is all i need or uh i love uh i you could put i love you more than i love my morning coffee <laughs> or i love you more than a bee loves honey so stuff like that so it's a really cute little collection that you can kind of put together your own little own little sayings. <clears throat> oh, right. I was wanting to stamp this and I forgot. So let me get my Misty out really quickly. We'll stamp this and then apply it. I did the first time I stamped because I wasn't sure where exactly that was going to actually, you know what? I'm going to do that again. I wasn't sure exactly where the curtain fold was going to land. So I didn't stamp it until after everything was applied to the card. So I'll show you that as well. I mean, it's not, not rocket science, but not, nothing in crafting really is. It's just sometimes I didn't, you know, not that I didn't think it could be done. It just, it didn't occur to me. Usually the stamping is done kind of before the card is all assembled and not afterwards, but you know, it's, it's what I decided to do yesterday when I was doing the, the templates. So this 
this one is a little bit, it's a little bit smaller because, you know, I didn't really want to cut another piece, but this is kind of going to fit in there and make that all kind of go away. <clears throat> so I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the first card. I'm going to cut a bit of ribbon. We're going to have that wrap around. I'm just going to grab some of my score tape, my fantastic score tape. We're going to go like that. I kind of went a little bit crazy on one side, that's for sure. Oh well. Okay. I left a little bit kind of like off the edge a little bit just so that I could um, also give it something to adhere to on the paper. There we go. So I'm going to lay that down carefully, being careful and mindful that I'm A, not sticking my head on the camera, and B, not pressing on it a lot because then it's just going to get stuck to my table. So twofold. Okay. So far, so good. <laughs> now we are going to put our glue on the back. I'm going to run it along there as well. and find the perfect spot for the curtain. Excellent. Oh, well, it's kind of a little bit off, but okay, that's fine. It's not crazy. And so what I did last time was I took my Misty, I kind of just laid that in there. The magnet is super strong. So even through, even through the foam, um, it's, it's not going anywhere. I'm just going to peel off the word and place it where I want to there. Wouldn't be surprised. Oh, there's no ink there, but I'm going to do the exact same thing as what I did on the first card. So ink that up really well, press down, and there's, it's, it's got pretty good coverage, but I want to, I want like complete, I want solid black. <clears throat> and there we have it. So that part is done. I don't want to get my, my, um, foam piece all kind of inky. So I'm just going to put this back down until I can clean it. And then all we have to do is on the inside, put down our, our, um, inside panel because being that the card is black, you need to have something on the inside so that you can write on. I'll lay this down really quickly. And then you could decide how you want to decorate it. So going back to the stickers for two reasons. I like this little heart, heart light bulb, heart bulb. And then on the top, since I can't do the XO, and I think this is going to be too long, if I'm not mistaken. I think I looked at that. Yeah, I looked at that yesterday. I was like, oh, it's just a little bit too long. That's fine. I'm going to take this other cute little border that we have as part of the stickers. I'm just going to lay that across. And let's get that cut straight so it's not all weird there we go and there we have it so we have 
two cards, two different ways of doing a curtain fold, a lovely curtain fold. And let me bring those other ones back in here. So we've got card option number one on this side, card option number two on this side. So I'm super happy with the way this turned out. Um, I love these cards. I think they're really super cute. Hopefully you think so too. Hopefully you thought this tutorial was of value and hopefully you liked it. And if you did, please give me a big old thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any future videos. I am working my way to getting a video a day out today, this week, because uh, earlier this week we hit 100 subscribers, which is a huge milestone for us, and we really appreciate all the support. So thank you all very, very much for that. I really, really appreciate it. If you haven't heard, we are doing a giveaway since we hit 100 subscribers and that video will be on the left hand side and if you see my little watermark on the right hand side that is your cue to subscribe if you haven't already so if you don't know what the giveaway is about click on the video and you will be directed to that fantastic giveaway as well as how to um how to enter yourself in the in the you know in the giveaway, in the prize, <laughs> in the running, in the raffle. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate, again, all the support. I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay well. Bye.